While considered one of the strongest units in random map, Arbalests are not generally considered strong in deathmatch. That's largely because they're countered by both Siege and Cavalry, the two main classes of power units in deathmatch. However, they still have uses in DM. In this video, I'll compare them to unique units and other units with similar support roles to show you when Arbalests are a good choice and when they are not. If you're not a deathmatch player, that's alright, because many of the things I'm talking about still apply to RA. And so, let's get started. Arbalests are the Imperial Age upgrade to the Crossbowmen. When fully upgraded, they have 40 HP, 10 attack, 3 melee armor, and 4 pierce armor, with 8 range. They are available to 18 civilizations, even though not all of these civilizations have fully upgraded ones. They're generally used as support units to weaken enemy armies. They work well at protecting siege, infantry, or even cavalry at times. In this role, they work very well versus infantry, but they can still deal damage to cavalry. They're countered very heavily by onagers and rams, though, and when alone, heavy cavalry will get the job done, too. In random map, it's really not that bad of a problem because crossbows are a strong unit in Castle Age, and because it's difficult to fill large power armies. However, in deathmatch, large power armies are the norm, and as such, arbalests are pretty weak. Not all arbs are created equal, though. Some of them have almost no uses, while others can be a pretty good choice, dependent upon their upgrades and their civilization. A few civilizations have bonuses for them. The Aztecs are created 15% faster like all military units, but they miss thumb rank and ring archer armor. The Britons have plus 3 range and are created 20% faster, but they also miss thumb rank. The Ethiopians fire 18% faster with no drawbacks, the Italians have plus one plus one armor, and the Mayans are 30% cheaper so they cost 17 wood and 32 gold instead of 24 wood and 45 gold. Also in the HD expansions they have plus six attack versus building. Also relatedly the Portuguese cost 15% less gold but this really is definitely not as good as the Mayan bonus and the Vietnamese have 20% more HP so it's 48 instead of 40 so it's not that great of a bonus. Now I want you to notice something important about many of the Arbalest civilizations. Notice that many of them have foot archer unique units that fulfill similar roles. The Britons have longer ranged longbows. The Italians have the anti-cavalry Genoese crossbowmen. The Mayans have faster and tankier plumed archers. The Vietnamese have elite rat and archers with higher speed and pierce armor. And the Chinese have elite Chukonu that fire multiple arrows. Now, in this video, I'm not going to make a comparison between each and every one of these units, but there is something I want to point out. In most of these situations, the alternative foot archer is a statistically superior unit. However, remember that while these alternatives are oftentimes created faster than arbalests, they are all made at castles. This means that it's far easier to train arbalests because it takes far less time to create archery ranges. However, I want to know, is it worth it to make arbalests instead of these units? To start by looking at the early game of a deathmatch game, in general, you would go for arbalests as a support unit, ranges will generally be the second or third type of building you make. However, you might want to know, would it be worth it to skip the arbalests and instead go straight into elite longbowmen or Genoese crossbowmen? Well, let's do a few creation speed tests. Let's suppose that you have six Chinese villagers that can create either castles or archery ranges. In a real game, you might have more, but then again, remember that you'd still have to make houses in order to get your population up, so I think that this is a good number of villagers to use. I had them make four castles in one test and eight ranges in another, and I made sure to have the villagers spread out as evenly as possible. In both tests, I started to create units as soon as those buildings were finished, and once I got 40 Chuko News or Arbalests, a Traeger would end the test. Looking at the results, we can see that all of the Arbalests were created by the end of the 3 minute mark, at which point not all of the castles were even finished. It took another minute and 40 seconds for the Chuko New to do the same, despite being created twice as fast. 
While this isn't a perfect demonstration of a real game, in my opinion it does demonstrate that if you're winning and you need a quick support unit to defend your infantry or cavalry, go for ARBs instead of your unique foot archer. However, as the game goes on, it's probably better to use your better, statistically superior unit because it will be a better use of your population space. However, remember, you still have other options you might want to use which you should compare and contrast. First, while heavy cav archers are created at the same speed as arbalests, they have far higher stats and mobility. They do cost a lot more though, and many civs lack upgrades. I would say that if you're a civilization that has both fully upgraded arbs and fully upgraded heavy cavalry archers, like the Japanese or the Magyars, go with the heavy cav archers, because they're more pop efficient and they are far more mobile. If you have fully upgraded arbalests, but heavy cavalry archers that miss something important, such as the Chinese, Ethiopians, and Italians, in my opinion, arbs are probably the better choice because the heavy cav archers will probably drain your gold supply too fast and just simply won't be worth it. Next, heavy scorpions move slower, create slower, are far more expensive, and are a lot less mobile than arbalests. However, they destroy large armies far quicker, are far more pop efficient, and can deal with elephants and rams far better. Most civs don't have both units, but for the Britons, Chinese, Ethiopians, Incas, Japanese, Magyars, Malay, Mayans, and Vikings, I would say that it's dependent on if you want to get more units out sooner or not. Also, keep in mind that they still work together fairly well, because the Scorpions can clear out large portions of the army, but the Arbalists can pick off the danger stragglers that might wreak havoc on your Scorpions. For Deathmatch, in my opinion Heavy Scorpions are the better unit, but in Random Map, mobility is far more important, so you have to keep this in mind. Out of the civs that have both Siege Onagers and Arbs, I'd normally suggest that you don't use the Arbs with the late game Koreans, Mongols, and Saracens, all of which have other alternatives. For the Aztecs, Ethiopians, Malians, and maybe the Koreans in the early deathmatch game, I think it still makes sense to make both units to get an early presence and to protect the siege as the game progresses. While ARBs are created twice as fast, siege onagers simply apply more pressure per unit and should be used whenever possible. For all the other ARB civs that don't have Siege Onager, I'd still say that the normal Onager can still be a useful addition to deal with archers and skirmishers, or just to add some power in general. I think these comparisons start to really show why Arbalests aren't that strong in Deathmatch. They're not as fast as Cav Archers, they're not as deadly as Siege or Cavalry, and they don't serve as a good meat shield or as a counter unit in the way that infantry can. However, in the correct situation, they can serve as a decent support unit, and the ability to use them correctly can allow you to apply early pressure to an opponent. However, notice that saves such as the Britons and the Vikings, which rely on the Arbalest, are simply some of the worst deathmatch saves. The reason for this is that they rely on the Arbs not because they're a good unit, but only because they lack other options in many situations. However, in random map, where it's very difficult and slow to get large power armies out, upgrading your crossbowmen to arbalists can give you a significant advantage. However, you could get an even larger advantage with early access and direct input into my video scripts, as well as the ability to view special wallpapers and other benefits, by becoming a patron for as little as $1 a month. Current patrons are Ethan Brown, Jacob Peterson, John Kumanel, Elite Shukanu, Bansard, Lawrence, and Z. Go to patreon.com slash jred toll free in order to see full benefits. Shipping and handling rates do not apply. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.